Hey, hey, God bless you. God bless all of you. Uh, God bless all of you. I know it's early. It's about 1.27 from what I'm seeing here, but we are going to go ahead and we are going, I'm just going to make this a quick, 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 quick lesson today. It's probably going to be no more than 15 to 20 minutes. We're going to wrap up the Ten Commandments this afternoon. Um, we are talking about the last one, which is thou shalt not covet. Uh, so it's about 127. Um, at about 130, I'm going to go ahead and say a word of prayer. And we are going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, but I'm going to invite a couple of people on. Um, thou shalt not covet. Now, some of us uh, may not realize it, but some of us may covet something that you have um that is coveting it doesn't mean that you want something that's like it it means you want that exact thing coveting is wrong coveting is sin why because coveting a lot of times will lead to us being discontent with what god has already given us with what god has already provided um and so uh since it is saturday i know you guys got a uh probably a hectic day you know gotta go around go shop and do all that good stuff I'm going to make this a short lesson for you all. So uh, really, when it comes to covenant, we must learn to be satisfied. We must learn to be happy with what God has given us. It doesn't mean that, uh, you know, we it doesn't mean that we have everything that we want, um, you know, but we, we must be thankful because we have everything that we need. Um, God has met our needs or God is meeting our needs. Um, if you like what you hear today. Uh, you can share it out with your friends, with your family, um, with anybody who, you know, you think may uh, be blessed by this video. So no coveting. Amen. So let's go ahead and say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now to say thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day that you've blessed us with. Lord, I ask right now in Jesus' name that you be with us, Lord, as we Spend some time in your word this afternoon, Lord. Give us what to say. Lord, give me what to say. Lord, word my mouth and pray and ask that you will help this to be edification for the viewers and those who will hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. And so then you guys, so then so you guys are not confused. I will be uh going live this evening um at six o'clock as well. Um the Lord has given me two uh lessons to teach to you all today. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the Ten Commandments. Then this evening, we're going to be talking about uh, the remnant of God's people. And so I will go ahead and uh, go live at six o'clock with that. So um, turn with me to Exodus chapter 20, uh, which we're still ahead. Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. All right. Verse 17. This is what the word says. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his maidservant, nor his manservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So what God was basically saying there, stop coveting. Stop wanting things that are unavailable to you. You know, many times we get caught up. You know, we get caught up in the glamour of things. We get caught up in the hype of things. We see people get um, accolades. We see people get uh, things that we want. And, you know, it's not bad to desire good things. Don't get me wrong. It's not bad to desire good things. But to desire them to the point where you want exactly what somebody has or what somebody has already attained, that is coveting. Now, let me go ahead and um, take you to a story here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and because I don't want to waste you, I don't want to waste no time this afternoon. I'm going to take you to a story um, in the Bible. We're going to go to 1 Samuel, the book of 1 Samuel chapter. Uh, no, not 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, excuse me. 2 Samuel chapter 11. 2 Samuel chapter 11. Um, this, is, this deals um, in a way with coveting. This is uh, context is when David um, is, he, he stares at Bathsheba a little bit too long. And because of that, because of the lust of his heart, because of him wanting what somebody else already had, see, he thought that he was, he thought that because he was the king, he could get away with anything. And I'm going to say this before I read this scripture. Don't let your title, don't let your position think that you can escape the judgment of God. 
Don't let your title, don't let your position think that uh, make you think that you know more than God, make you think that you're above correction or above order. Let me read to you what the Bible says here. Uh, so verse three, 2 Samuel chapter 11 and verse three, it says, and David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, is that not Bathsheba, the daughter of Iliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So she was already somebody's wife. You know, she was already somebody's wife. You know, common sense says, uh when you see when you see a, a wedding ring now they didn't have wedding rings back then but you know um in today's day and age when you see somebody and they have a wedding ring on their finger or you know they they say you know that they're married uh you should stay away right but let's look at what david did let's look at what david did he says and david sent messengers and took her and she came in unto him and he lay with her for she was purified from her uncleanness and she returned to her house so he thought that just because he was the king, he said, I did, I don't care what it looks like. You know, I, I don't care what it, he said. I'm going to he said, I'm going to do what I want to do. And can't nobody do anything about it. And that's a dangerous place to be to think that just because you're in a certain position that you're above reproach and that nothing bad can happen to you. You understand just because of David's sin, he he, he witnessed all this dysfunction uh, throughout the lineage of his family. He, he witnessed everything that happened. You know, uh, things happened to his kids. Things happened to people that he loved. If you go and you and you read further into that story. Um, now, let me read verse five to you. It says, and the woman conceived and when sent and told David said, I am with child. So he got her pregnant. See, watch this now. Her sin showed outwardly, but nobody could. David thought nobody could tell him nothing because, uh, well, they said, well, they didn't see me. They didn't see me sleep with her. They didn't see me do this. See, many times I'm going to say this to you. Your sins will find you out. Your sins will find you out. If you're coveting, if, if you're wanting something that somebody else has, it'll show. It'll start to show. If you let it, it'll start to show in your demeanor. It'll start to show in how you address that person. It'll start to show. We say, well, why, Brother Gabriel, will it start to show? It'll start to show because instead of you know rejoicing with that person, sometimes you just sit there like this. You know, be looking like you've been eating lemons or, you know, um, and, and really uh, another thing we must realize about coveting is that not only is it a sin, but it also says that you're not happy with what God has given you. You're not happy with what God has given you. See, God has given us life. God has given us health. God has given us strength. God has given us all of these things. And yet, Sometimes we find ourselves in a place where we're not happy with those things because we don't have, you know, the, 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 the nicest house. So we don't have the nicest car, but we see our neighbor with that. And because our neighbor got it, uh, that that means that that we automatically feel entitled that we should have it, too. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this loud and I'm going to say this clear. Just because you see somebody with a blessing does not mean that God was the one that gave it to them. Number two, just because you see somebody uh, blessing does not mean that, you know, there is no upkeep with that blessing. Hey, they may be able to handle the upkeep of a car. They may be able to handle, um, you know, the upkeep of, you know, a Lexus or, you know, the, the, the maintenance or uh, the car payments. I mean, car payments are expensive these days, right? So you may see somebody and, you know, they, they may have these things, but you don't know what, the, number one, you don't know what they had to get through in order to, in order to get those things, in order to attain those things. And so, um, and another thing that I want to talk about is anointings, right? Quit coveting people's anointings. Just because somebody teaches better than you, just because somebody uh, 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 prophesies better than you, just because somebody has better success on their job better than you, they may have the grace that it takes to handle that position. They may have the grace that it takes in order to deliver that prophetic word. They may have the grace that it takes in order to do those things. But why? Because you want that certain thing. It's like you, you say, I don't care what they went through. See, you don't know what somebody went through in order to get the anointing that they have. Some, some people may not be able to stand being homeless. Some people may not be able to stand things that happening to them as a child. Some things uh, people may not be able to stand or be able to handle. And he and, and, and God gave them a certain level of anointing that was suitable for them, just like God gave you a level of anointing that is suitable for you. It does not mean that God loves you anymore. It does not mean that God loves you any less. Now, let me take you back to the Bible. Um, let's go to the book of Philippians. I'm going to come back to 
um, Exodus in a minute, but let's go to the book of Philippians. I want to take you, I got a second Bible here. I want to take you to uh, chapter four, uh, Philippians chapter four, and we are going to go over to uh, verse number 12. So this is what the word of God says. Oh, so let's go to verse 11. It says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I'm in, therewith to be content. So this is Paul talking. This is Paul talking. He says, oh, watch it again, Philippians 4 and verse 11. It says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Right? Okay. To be content. Verse 12, I know both how to be abased and I know how to be a bound. So in, in modern day language, Paul is saying, hey, I know how to eat a steak sandwich. And he said, hey, I know how to eat just bread and water. You know, for some of us, uh, it could be, hey, I know how to live in a mansion. Hey, I know how to live in a one bedroom apartment. But he said, in whatsoever state I'm in, I've learned to be content. And so what I want to, the question that I want to pose is, have we learned the same thing? Let's keep reading verse 12. It says, Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer in need. Now, some of you may ask, well, Brother Gabriel, why does God allow us sometimes to suffer in need? Well, he allow, I believe, and this is not about, but I believe personally that he, allows, he allowed me to suffer some things in my personal life because I was going to later down the line run into people in life that needed to hear my testimony that needed to hear uh, what the Lord had did for me in order to give them encouragement. See, you know, it, it's very hard to reach um, a certain uh, group of people as hard as, you know, even poor people. It's like, you know, it's it, it's hard to reach them if you've never been poor. Now, I mean, yeah, you can tell them what the Bible said, but hey, can you identify with my uh, with my situation? Can you identify with my circumstance? Um, and, you know, a lot of times people what I have learned about people, sometimes you just need to just let them talk. You know, it's one thing to give people the word of God. It's a whole nother thing to make the word of God applicable and relevant to the situation that they're going through. OK, so let me go ahead and read this one more time. It says, not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I'm in wherewith to be content. I know both how to be a base and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am obstructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer in need. Now, let's go and look at uh, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 17 again. I want to take you guys back there. And I'm going to read you some commentary um, out of this Bible that I have. This is what uh, thou shalt not covet me. This is what the, it means according to this commentary. This commandment goes beyond the external sin of word or deed to condemn evil motives and desires. I'm going to say this. When you see people and you're rejoicing with people, when you see people and you are uh, and you are around them and you see what they have, what is your motive? What is your motive? And you got to be careful. Those of you who God has blessed, you got to be careful because everybody around you does not want to see you succeed. You have some people around you that want to see you fail. All right. I'm going to I'm going to uh, keep reading this here. Coveting involves desire or lust for that is wrong or belongs to another person. Paul claims that this commandment reveals the death of human sinfulness. Romans 7 uh, verse 7 through 13. Let's go ahead and turn there and see what Paul has to say. Uh, Romans chapter 7 verse 7 through 13. OK, so Romans chapter 7. And we're going to go to verses 7 through 14, 7 through 13, excuse me. And this is what the Bible says. So uh, starting at verse 7, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law has said, thou shalt not covet. But sin take occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of uh, what is that word? Con Concupiscence um, in whatever version that you have. Um, verse 8 says, for without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be 
unto death. Now, verse 11 says, For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me. By it, slew me. Verse 12 says, Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Verse 13 says, was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin that it might appear sin worketh death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might be exceeding sinful. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead. and Now, with that understanding of what that says, I'm going to go ahead and read this commentary one more time. It says, this commandment goes beyond the external sin of word or deed to condemn evil motives and desires. Coveting involves the desire or lust of all that wrong or belongs to another person. Paul claims that this commandment reveals the depth of human sinfulness. Romans 7, 7 through 13. This law, this law as well as others, exposed the depravity of men and women and calls for them to seek grace and moral power from God. Only by regenerative power of the Holy Spirit can one live a life pleasing to God. Do you have the Holy Spirit? That's my next question. Because see, if we have the Holy Spirit, watch this. If we if we really have the true Holy Spirit, not the Kondalini Spirit, not the Spirit that make you get up and run sprints around the church. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, the one that uh, allows you to live holy at three o'clock in the morning when you get sex messages. I'm talking about that Holy Spirit that allows you to uh, 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 when you when you want to cuss somebody out, you just say God bless you and keep moving. I'm talking about that Holy Spirit that um, that it will lead and guide you in all truth. That will lead and guide you in all truth. Now, I'm going to uh, share something with you here. Um, you know, when you have the true Holy Spirit, he will help you to not covet. He will help you to not covet. Now, let me take you to the book of uh First, uh, let me take you to the book of First Peter. We're going to go ahead and go to First Peter real fast here. Um, First Peter chapter four, and we are going to go to verse number three. And before I say that, I'll say this. We, we must be very careful because when you when you uh, walk in, in, in your covetous, a lot of times that le not only leads to being discontent, but also that leads to jealousy that can lead to envy. That can lead to all of these other things that God does not want us to hold on to. Let me go to 1 Peter 4 and 3. This is what the Bible says about this. For the time past our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness. That means foolishness. That means, uh, you know, you walking in, you walking in all this foolishness. You know, you're sitting here trying to impress people that don't even like you. Anyway, um, I'm going to keep reading. Um, lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them. Sometimes when you're not coveting what other people have, people are going to think that it's strange. Hey, why don't you want the nicest car in the lot? Hey, why don't you want the latest suit from men's warehouse? Hey, why don't you uh, want, you know, the nicest house? Why don't you want that promotion? Why don't you want this? Why don't you want that? Right. Let's keep reading here. Uh, revelings, banquetings and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. That means if, you, hey, if, if I'm not covering cool, that, that doesn't mean that people ain't going to still hate on me. See, one thing I've learned about people is this. Even if you don't covet after the same things that they are coveting after, they will still find reason to talk about you. They will still find reason to hate on you. They will still find reason to say all kinds of things about you that are not true. But you just keep walking. What does the Bible say in 1 Timothy 3 and 12? It says, all those that live godly shall suffer persecution. See, godly persecution comes because you're living right. But see, watch this. All persecution that you suffer is not godly. Some of that persecution is things that we have brought on ourselves. But if you are living right, you will suffer persecution. Now, um, verse five says, who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. So we might. And as I wrap up here, we must decide. 
who am I going to live for? Who am I going to live to please? Right? Are you going to please God? Or are you going to please men? Are you going to please? Uh, are you going to walk after God's word? Or are you going to succumb to the traditions of men, the customs of men? And, you know, some traditions are good traditions. Most traditions are not. That That's just something that, that, that I have come to learn. Something that I have come to learn. Now, uh, a bad tradition is one that does not line up with the scripture. Because the Bible, this book right here, the Bible is the is, is the one and true word, and should govern everything. Now it does. Now uh, some people don't allow it to govern their lives, and we just have to pray for them. And now going back to covered, and I'm going to say this, you know, God has enough blessings for everybody. God has enough blessings for His children. And you don't have to hate on your brothers and sisters just because they have something that you want, just because they have something that you may have not got yet. I know that on my page, there's many of you that are single and desiring to be married. Hey, there ain't nothing wrong with that, but watch this. Y'all think that, some of y'all think that getting married is gonna solve your problems. <laughs> no, brother, no, sister, you just got a whole set of new problems, all right? So um, really what I, what I wanna say is this, you know, God has everything in store for us. All we have to do is seek him. He wants a relationship with us. He wants a relationship with his children. He wants a relationship with his children. But what his children have to do is they have to, we have to want God more than we want all this stuff, more than we uh, want exactly what Sister Susie has or Brother brother Joseph have. You know, we, we've got to want more than that. We've got to just want God. You know, you can have all this stuff. but Just give me God. And, you know, he we know that he wants a relationship with us because he sent his son, Jesus, down to die on the cross for our sin. Because as it is written, um, verse in Romans 10 and 9, it says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. And then it also says in 2 Peter 3 and 9, it says it's not but the Lord is long suffering towards us, not willing that any perish, but that all come to repentance. And it's not too late for you to repent. We are living in an hour, we are living in a time where we need to repent, right? And so when Jesus came down, hey, he died a death that he didn't deserve. He paid a price that he didn't owe. You know, they nailed his hands and his feet. You know, they pierced him in the side. Uh, they whipped Jesus all night long. And see, these were things that we were supposed to be going through. You understand? But see, because of God sending his son to die for, for our sins, you know, he was the perfect sacrifice. And see, now watch this. I'm, I'm going I'm to share something with y'all. Because some people seem to have a, a they, they seem to have a, a misinterpretation or, or a false perception of God. Yes, God is a righteous God. God is a loving God. But see, while we're living in this hour now, he's also a God that is giving you time to repent before judgment comes. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that later on uh, this evening. But, um, you know, really with that, I want to leave you all with this. You don't have to covet. You don't have to hate on your neighbors, your brothers and sisters. Because watch this, the Bible says what? Let me read it to you, actually. Go with me to, uh, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. This is what the word of God was, would tell you, because I'm going to read it to you, because I want you all to know that I'm not making this stuff up. Okay? So this is what the Bible says here. Um, it says... 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And we say we love God. We say, God, I love you. God, I honor you. God, I adore you. Okay, well, what is the love of God according to the Bible? Let me show you that. Go with me to the book of 1 John chapter 5. Okay, first John chapter five, and we are going to go to verse number. Okay, we are going to start at verse two. First John chapter five and verse two. By this 
we we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Verse three, for this is the love of God. It's about to tell you that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. That means that what he's already put on record for us to do is not hard to follow. We just have to have a made up mind. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to myself as well. We just have to have a made up mind to you know, follow God, love God, obey God's word, obey God's commandments that he has placed in, in the book. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and say a word of prayer. We're going to get out of here. Father, in Jesus name, I thank you, Lord, for this day, this time that you've allowed us to send in your word. Lord God, I thank you, God, for giving us a time to really talk about not coveting. Lord God, we know that you have enough blessings for all of us, Lord, your children. Lord, I pray and ask right now in the name of Jesus that if one is coveting over something, God, that you will give them peace in their heart to know that you have something tailor-made, ready, specially just for them. Lord, because your word tells us eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the good things you have in store for them that love you. Lord God, I pray and ask in the name of Jesus, if there's one soul that hears this word and does not know you, Lord, help them to come to the truth and knowledge of who you are. Because, Lord God, when we have an encounter with you, something must change. Lord God, we thank you, God, for the gift of salvation, Lord, for you said in your word that you sent your son Jesus to die, Lord, and that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, and we thank you for the gift of eternal life. Lord God, we thank you and we pray and ask that you keep us safe. For the rest of the day as we go to and fro, God, protect us, Lord. We know that there's a lot of craziness going on around out here, God. We pray and ask that you will protect us, that you will keep us, Lord. Help us to hide in your secret place, Lord, because in the secret place is our protection, is our provision, Lord God. And you promised that you would provide for all of our needs according to the, your riches and glory through your son, Christ Jesus. And we thank you for these and for all things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I just wanted to finish out the Ten Commandments this afternoon. Uh, it's about 154. I will be back online at six o'clock. And um, God has given me a word uh, for the people. It's not con it's not necessarily concerning the uh, coronavirus, uh, but it is concerning something with, that we need to be doing as the body of Christ. So God bless you. God keep you. I love all of you. I'll talk to you and see you soon.